Walker. And the earth rumbled and shook as the mighty came rolling in, ranked number one. Lynn Swan is down on the field. I'm Keith Jackson. Bob Greasy is not with us. We had a vote and decided it was time that old dad go see his son play quarterback at Michigan. And so we dispatched him, as we understand, into dreadful weather, but the Wolverines won. Bob will be back with us next week. With us today is a young man who was young once, about uh, 15, 20 years ago, <laughs> and 10 years ago, we were here in this very spot, our longtime friend and colleague, Tim Brandt. Well, sir, great to be back with you, partner. The last time you and I were here, 64-3, 1986, Kansas lost big. But a lot has changed since then. Cold then, too. That's it, just as cold. <laughs> The overriding question about this ball game, is there any way in the world that Kansas can stop the Nebraska juggernaut? Nobody has, Keith. Absolutely nobody this year. Nebraska averages over 55 points a game. Now, Kansas defense is young, very inexperienced. They're going to have to pursue like crazy and hope, and hope a lot. Well, ball control is an obvious factor if you're going to contend at all with Nebraska. Kansas has a couple of running backs that are pretty good. Well, L.T. Levine and June Henley are outstanding backs. They've gone over 2,000 yards each for their careers. They're going to have to hold the ball. This is hammer and chisel time. They, it's the only chance I think Kansas has today is to keep Nebraska off the field. I think the general consideration is, too, that the Cornhuskers have not had a day in which they've made very many mistakes. They may not do it again today, but for Kansas to have a realistic chance, Nebraska's going to have to help them. Oh, I agree. They're going to have to help them. Kansas is going to have to hope they're going to have to play aggressively and keep Nebraska's offense off the field. It's a clear day, but it sure is crisp. It's about 32 degrees, and now we go to New York City. Our studio host, John Saunders. The Cornhuskers wearing the white shirt will kick off. The Jayhawks will then have the first offensive possession of the ball game. Chris Brown will do the kicking for the Huskers, the freshman from South Lake, Texas. Deep for Kansas will be Ashonde Smith, number six, and June Henley. Number 20. And the game is on. 90 in a row they've played, and Brown, as usual, has knocked it beyond the playing field, and Kansas will have the 20 yard line first down. Mark Williams is the senior quarterback for the Jayhawks. Nine and one as a starter, 15 touchdowns. The Chili's starting lineup of backs and receivers feature number one for the Kansas Jayhawks, Isaac Bird. He's a burner. He's a big play man, and they're going to need some today. This is June Henley, who's been a very steady, tough performer for the Jayhawks, but the Cornhuskers on his first effort of the afternoon eat him up for a loss of at least a yard and a half. The offensive front for Kansas has to step up. They've simply got to give their quarterback and their running back some time to pick and choose. And Chris Banks, an offensive guard, is one of the steadiest of all those people up front today. Scott Whitaker getting the start along the offensive front. But that offensive line has got to take care of the Nebraska defensive rush. Otherwise, the Jayhawks are going to have a long afternoon. That ball just simply may have stuck to his fingers because it's a very cold day. It was L.T. Levine, and the ball was bounced at his feet. The defensive front seven for Nebraska, all good. The Peter brothers inside the defensive ends, but the man who flies around like a madman is Terrell Farley. Came out of junior college and has stepped in to the Cornhusker lineup with 47 tackles already. You know what's interesting about that, Keith, is that they only really have two down linemen. True. And that's like two stumps with deep roots. You don't find much room to run around in there. Williams gets his pass away, and his man is wide open. It's the tight end, Jim Moore. And once again, a tight end finds playing room against the Nebraska secondary. It's happened a lot this year. Moore is a six foot four inch, 245 pounder from Garden City. It's first down, Jayhawks. This is just a breakdown in coverage. I don't think anybody out there on the cornerback expected him to slide. You can see the cornerback over there comes in with the out pattern, and they just take the tight end underneath. Nobody picked him up. They've got to go wide as a wide, as deep as a deep, as somebody got suckered in. June Henley is a single back on first down at the 48-yard line. He has the ball, looks for some daylight, and finds a couple of yards as he reaches midfield. 
The defensive backs for the Cornhuskers, anchored by Tony Veland, the former quarterback at Free Safety, who sets him up back there. But the cover man and the real tough guy is number eight, Tyrone Williams. Now, he doesn't have the big stats, mainly because they don't throw the ball in his neighborhood. No, that's a good point. He's an all-conference quarterback, first team last year, rookie Big 8, uh, newcomer of the year in 93. He's a quality player. On second down and eight, the ball is drilled to Isaac Bird, and he's going to have another Kansas first down. The ball at the Nebraska 35-yard line. Keith, you just said it. Don't throw to Williams. Booker, that time, was on the corner. And they just came inside, sprinted past him. Well, the Jayhawks are moving the football. The possession started at their own 20. They need a cushion. And they're trying to get it quickly. This is a great start for KU, Keith. They want to keep that Nebraska offense off the field, and they're doing it right here by breaking tendencies, and they're very unpredictable. William hands the ball away. And number 20, June Henley, slips and slides, and Jamel Williams takes him down for a yard loss. And now here's John Saunders. Keith, Iowa against Northwestern and the Wildcats catch a break here. Matt Sherman to Derek Price. Watch as he gets stuck. He fumbles the ball. Hood Haifa Ishmaeli picks it up, rumbles 31 yards, and that cinches the victory. 31 to 20, still unbeaten in the Big Ten. Darnell Autry, 32 carries, 110 yards, 11th straight game, over 100. Keith. First possession of this ball game, Kansas second down and 10. The ball is at the Nebraska 35. Cornhuskers, obviously, the number one team in the country. Jayhawks, number 10, looking for some help. A struggle pass here as the ball goes to L.P. Levine. And he gets across the 35 and down to about the 33. So they'll be looking at third down and long. Keith, I really think offensively, they got to keep Nebraska off the field offensively. They've got to have ball control. We're talking about 60 snaps offensively. And defense, we talked about it. They haven't had their shot yet, but they've got to overload. They've got to pursue and get 11 guys around the football. They've got to force turnovers. And as the coaches said to us, they have to hope and get lucky. Third down and eight. Williams rolls out, gets a little help from the corner from number 79, throws the ball away. Nobody available and on running for his life. He didn't have time to do a whole lot of cruising and looking, so he just dumps it, and it'll bring up fourth down. This is an interesting situation, Keith. Now what do you do? Do you go ahead and do you punt the ball when you have great field position? You're out of field goal range here. I say they'll probably go for it on fourth. Simmons is in. They are going to try to punt it and pin Nebraska. Crowd doesn't like that. Now here comes the quarterback back on, so uh, maybe you're right. I would definitely go for it on fourth down here. In a game like this, you've got to gamble. You've got to take your shots when you have good field position. Simmons did not make his move in. He was ready to come, and they didn't summon him, so they'll go on fourth and ten. Ball is right about the 35 where he went out of bounds. And I guess he... Len Mason saying it's fourth and nine. It should be, yeah, because the ball was up on the 33-yard uh, line. And either he stepped out of bounds before he threw it, or they've made a mistake and now they correct it. Put it on the 33. So it'll be fourth down and eight. And they're out of the shotgun. He's got pretty good protection, throws the ball very hard, and it's slapped down by Phil Ellis, linebacker, who dropped into the short zone. And the man for whom the pass was intended was simply wallowing around on a sea of white shirts. It was simply not available. So the Cornhuskers will take over as Tommy Frazier trots out on the field. Tommy Frazier, the senior, graduating in four years, right on schedule, may very well, in my opinion at least, be the best all-around college football player in the country. If he's not in a class of his own, it doesn't take long to take role where he is. Senior from Palmetto, Florida. See, the flip, side, to, keep the flip side of that one field on fourth is now you give Nebraska a great field position to start this series. That's right. Frazier going down the line on the option play. Turns up field with it, and he is taken down by number 41, Dick Holt, inside linebacker for the Kansas Jayhawks. 
To the Chili starting lineup, the backs and receivers for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, Amon Green, the running back, true freshman, number 30, needs three yards to reach a thousand yards rushing for this season. He has five 100 yard games so far this year. Including last week, he went for 176 yards. Frazier gained on that keeper two yards, second down and eight from the 35. Pounding in there is Brett McGraw, the sophomore out of Kansas City. A Garden City it is, and he makes the tackle a yard short of the line of scrimmage. McGraw, number 70. Boy, watch number 70 to the right of your screen. He just uses his quickness here. He's not a big guy. He's only 6'1", 275. I say not big compared to the Nebraska kids who are all 300-pounders. That's where he used his quickness as an advantage, got off the block and made the tackle. And it's third down and nine for the Cornhuskers as Frazier goes to the shotgun. Has all day to throw, delivers the ball to the receiver, but it is short of the first down. Lester Johnson making the catch, couldn't make something happen. And they stop him just short of the 42. They had to go past the 43 for the first down. Keith Jackson, that is huge. Last week, Nebraska scored on its first 10 possessions. Now Kansas comes out here and sets the tempo for the day by stopping Nebraska's first offensive series. Three plays, punt, and get out of there. Well, two years ago, they had a war here, and Kansas wound up losing by a point. This is the one place that Tom Osborne fears. Jesse Push is in the kick. Kick is away. It's a good high one going up into the slight breeze. Nebraska's covered the ball. It's going toward the end zone as it gets away from them. It's touchdown, Cornhuskers. John Metro. Looking into the sun, loses concentration. Oh, what a terrible mistake. Then the ball gets kicked. That's the worst thing that could have happened. And look at 25. Bidroll just has it. Nebraska scores. One of the four don'ts of the kicking game. Don't let the ball hit the ground. Federal holds now for Chris Brown. He'd have been better off with all that traffic to a call fair catch. It's about 32 degrees, we're told. Chill factors down in the 20s. Mercifully, right now, the wind is very slight. Kick is up, and the kick is good. So at 9.17 to go in the first quarter, special team comes up with a touchdown for the Huskers. Has absolutely nothing to do with the sun. Just watch his eyes. He picks up number 57, Chad Kelsey. Right there, look. He's looking at 57, takes his eye off the ball, puts it on the ground. Seven points for Nebraska. So the Huskers will kick off. And Kansas will send Smith and June Hendley deep. And Chris Brown, who seemingly is headed for all manner of freshman records as a kicker at Nebraska, will hammer it toward the end zone. You know, that's a heartbreaker, Keith, after the defense comes on and makes a defensive stop to have it, uh, a turnover end up in the end zone for a touchdown. Kicking game always figures in the outcome sooner or later. That's two yards deep in the end zone for Smith. Ashande finds a crack and crosses the 40-yard line. So a big return for Ashunde Smith, and here is Lynn Swan. Okay, you know, I went to the locker room, and Glenn Mason listened to him address his football team. And there was a sign on the wall that said, play hard. He says, you got here, you have a winning record because you've done that, you played hard. An injured player, Maurice got, Gaddy got up and said, make sure we can do it. If we go out and play hard, we can stay undefeated in this house. An emotionally charged locker room, and sometimes when emotions that high, you make mistakes. And I think we saw the first one. Keith? 
All right, 20, it's June Henley and L.D. Levine in the backfield behind Mark Williams. Rolls it out, throws the ball, caught by Levine. Levine uh, is close to a first down as he gets it over on the Nebraska side of the field. Well, you have to be impressed with the way Kansas has come out offensively and defensively. They're executing the, the way they want to. How ironic is it when you have a great Nebraska team like this to have a guy score a touchdown on you that's a walk-on? Played his high school ball in South Dakota. He's a walk-on. Second down and one. The ball is at the 49-yard line of the Cornhuskers. Levine, the single back, gets the ball, goes into the middle, plays his way for the first down, and more update now on scores from John Saunders. Keith, you mentioned your usual partner, Bob Grease. He's not there because he's watching his son, Brian, play, although he didn't see much offense today. Rick Trevsker is sacked by Clarence Thompson here for the safety. That made it a 5-0 game, and that's how this one wound up. Michigan beating Purdue 5 zip. Keith. Cold, bitter day, I understand, too. From the 47, first down for the Jayhawks. Levine, the single back. Williams, little stand up. Pop throws to his tight end. Moore's got the ball. Gets down across the 40. Tony Beelan had a hold of him, but Jim Moore wouldn't surrender and went ahead and picked up another two yards after the catch. Keith, one of the things that Glenn Mason has done is very impressive. He wants that quick release, a quick game out of his quarterback. He knows that Nebraska is awfully strong defensively. They come with a lot of pressure, and they will sack you. So he's got him doing the two-step, the one-step drop. He's releasing the ball very quickly, and he's going to his big receivers more. Six-foot-three guy. He's now five for eight. Williams is throwing the football. Jose Friday joins Moore now. A double tight end alignment. Ball is handed inside. There for Levine. He is a senior out of Colonia, New Jersey, 210 pounds. Colonia, New Jersey just happens to be Glenn Mason's hometown. Dr. Tom, Tom Osborne, Kansas, as you see there, has never beaten him. This is his 23rd season. Two years ago, they came close. Trying to do what only three other living coaches have done win back to back national championships. Third down and two. that way. Levine is pummeled and chased all the way back near midfield, but they're going to mark his progress at about the 43-yard line. Coleman was the first guy to come through there and blunt his forward progress, and then the rest of the black shirts, as they call them, chased him all the way back to midfield. Yeah, that was well defended. That wasn't, uh, they didn't lose the first down on that play. They did the play before, and you mentioned it when we were talking before the game. Levine taps dance too much. He, he's got to jam up there and try to get the two and three yards when he needs that for the first down, rather than dancing around and looking for things to happen. Darren Simmons is in for his first punt now. There's no question about this one as the ball sits along the 43, and the deep man is Mike Fullman for Nebraska. But he got it out of there, and let's see about the roll. And it's finally going to take a little Kansas bounce and go inside the 20 and roll dead at about the 17 yard line. 7 0 Cornhuskers, six minutes to play first quarter. The offensive front for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, anchored by Aaron Graham at a mere 275 pounds, flanked by Aaron Taylor. At 3.05, Aaron Taylor and Graham together have had enough pancake blocks to flatten the platoon this season. I mean, they will turn you upside down. Run the ball for a couple of yards. I'm on green carrying, and I think he gets two out of that and leaves him one short of the 1,000 yards. Jason Thorin made the tackle. So he's too short of the 1,000 yards. Keith Rogers leads the defensive front for the Kansas Jayhawks. He's a 210 pounder, not very big. He's one of those DBs that moved up to an outside linebacker position and leads the team in tackling. He's experienced too, Keith. He's a senior, he's a captain, and he is aggressive. Out of the shotgun, there's a penalty flag. Remember in the Colorado game, it was an astounding thing that the Cornhuskers played that entire ball game without a penalty. Here we've got a flag, and they may have one here. We'll see. The referee is Steve Yuschek. 
Full start. Offense. Well, that's almost an upset when you see a corner make a mistake in 1995. Well, I agree with you. They have not had a bad game yet. We were saying today, perhaps, you know, every team has one eventually. This could be it. The defensive backs for the Kansas Jayhawks. Dorian Brew is the cover man. Mo Gaddy is the big hitter back there. Gaddy, you'll see him in the Nebraska backfield before the day is done. But it's Brew who takes the top receiver and generally does a pretty good job with him. And back goes Tommy Frazier. Looking around, has plenty of time, and throws to the sideline. The pass is caught by number five, Brendan Holbein. He takes a solid lick, but he takes care of the ball, and he's got a first down at the 29-yard line. Well, I'll tell you this, too. Brew had good coverage on him. You know, to win today, this is what I think. Nebraska just has to stay in its game plan. We talked about this team not making many mistakes. They execute properly, they win. And defensively, we've talked about them. They have to stop Henley and Levine. So first down, Cornhuskers at their 29. Green, the single back. With this blocking, he can't get to the line of scrimmage. He was a little late coming, and the Jayhawks were really searching for him. Jason Thorin, the sophomore from Lawrence, made the tackle. That's his second of the ball game, and they take him down back at the 27. Boy, they brought a lot of beef around there, too. They pulled the tackle and the guard, and Thorne got behind him. That's a guy. He was the top high school player in Kansas City. He's an outstanding player. He started as a true freshman. Well, it is third down and 12. Here's Green getting up to the 30-yard line on that carry. Brought down by Keith Rogers. And so the Cornhuskers... We'll bring up the third down. I didn't set you back for the uh, uh, because of the penalty. Tomorrow at 4 Eastern, 3 Central, Americans Michelle Kwan, Nicole Bobick, and an elite international field of skating's bright new stars hit the ice, featuring the ladies and dance competitions from Sudafed Skate America International. Tomorrow, here on ABC Sports. <laughs> now it is third down and nine. Pass complete to Federal. Federal is taken down two yards short of the first down. And now it'll be fourth down and kicking time. Again, John Saunders. Keep the Ohio State Buckeyes trying to remain unbeaten and riding this guy once again. Eddie George, 39 yards down the sidelines. A little punishment at the end. Gets it down to the four. Sets up Pepe Pearson for his touchdown run. 7-0 the Buckeyes on top. And George over 90 yards. Keith. All right, John, Jesse Cush is in to punt. First kick was 43 yards. Isaac Bird is back there again. Isaac fumbled it the first time. See if he gets a little gun shy this time. Spinning kick. Called a fair catch this time. Very clearly up at the 26-yard line. And there the Jayhawks will have possession after a 39-yard punt. In his eight seasons at Kansas, Glenn Mason yet to beat Nebraska. I talked to him yesterday, asked him, what? how do you beat Nebraska if you can? He said. To try to beat a team like Nebraska in their offense, because they're awful consistent, they don't make a lot of mistakes, they haven't had a turnover in four games, is that you have to play ball control offense. Because as long as you got the ball, Frazier and his people are on the sideline. And then when you have to give the ball up, you better have an effective kicking game so that they have a long way to go. If you're giving them the ball on or about the 50-yard line and shorter, they're going to put points up each and every time. Ball is loose on the ground. Do they call him down or do they call it fumble? They fumble. call it fumble. You don't beat Nebraska helping them. No, Nebraska can... doesn't need any help. So that's a second turnover for Kansas, and here's Nebraska sitting down there at the Kansas 30-yard line as Hendley lost the ball when he was hit. You are exactly right. You can't help him. The first one turned out to be a touchdown. Watch the strip from behind. He's got to put this ball away, tuck it behind. Once he cuts up, watch this. They just rake it right out of there. The strip from behind, the ball's loose before he goes down. And if you shorten the field in Nebraska like this, for the Cornhuskers, it's like running downhill. Now they have put the beleaguered and uh, much celebrated Lawrence Phillips onto the field. But he does not get the call here. Jeff Makovica. 
fullback takes it and Steve Bratton brings him down. So the fullback picked up about four yards and Lawrence Phillips now back on the field again after his suspension. His stats for his career are diminished considerably by his suspension. Absolutely. He was the leading candidate for the Heisman Trophy before he was suspended six weeks ago. Still a talent. So it's second down and uh, about six. Frazier keeps it. He's tough. Are you kidding me? That's your quarterback doing that. It's first and goal, Nebraska at the Kansas one. I'll tell you what, he may be the quarterback. He's also one of your leading rushers, and he could be the best athlete on the team. Watch the option now. The safety has to come up and take the pitch man. He also has to take the quarterback. There's one missed tackle, two missed tackles. You can't. This is ridiculous. Kansas has to wrap up. They've got to make the tackles when they have the ability to get to the ball, and they did. Great run by Frazier. Poor tackling by Kansas. A pickup of 25. Tommy would tell you that that was simply a great run. <laughs> it was. <laughs> On first and goal. From the one. Frazier keeps it. He didn't get in. It'll be second down. I don't think anybody's going to take anything away from Frazier. I mean, the guy runs a 4-6-40. You saw how athletic he is. He just continues to work hard. Said he's never played better and that he can actually read defense. They just called him a touchdown as they unstacked him, unwrapped him, and down at the bottom, they found he was over the goal line with the football, and it goes as a Nebraska touchdown. That's the latest call I've ever seen. They couldn't find him under the pile of humanity. Yeah, but watch from the sideline. This is what the side judge sees. He's got to be looking right now. You're right. He's totally blocked out. Both sides are. And they, they have no clue where he is. No. All right, that's the first record we have today. The longest call for a touchdown. So they'll go for the point with Chris Brown. That's the 76th touchdown produced in the career of Tommy Frazier running in pass. It was good. And it'll be flagged now. A minute 17 to go in the first quarter. Long talk about this penalty. Offsides against Kansas. They'll take the point and make it a 14 to nothing. Nebraska lead. Tommy Frazier's on his way to the clubhouse. For some reason, Lynn Swan will be in pursuit and try to find out. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll select the genuine Chevrolet most valuable player from each team. Today, Chevrolet contributing almost five and a half million dollars to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. Well, that's a big story with Frazier going into the locker room, Keith. You know, he had a, a bruise in his thigh earlier this week. And they, uh, they looked at it. They wanted to make sure it wasn't that blood clot situation. So Behringer now warming up and will probably come in if, unless Frazier comes back in a hurry. Well, he's uh, he was dragging a leg, so that, uh, that hit may be bothered. They lead 14 to nothing, though, off two turnovers by Kansas. This is a Shonda Smith drifting under it at the one-yard line. Looks to bounce outside. Can't get loose. It's taken down at about the 12-yard line. Joel Makovica. The younger of the brothers made the tackle for the Cornhuskers. So here in this first quarter, Kansas at times looked like they could do something. Then they shot themselves in the foot. Actually, offensively and defensively, they've been pretty solid, except for the two turnovers. Kansas yardage accumulated here in the first quarter, four yards on the ground and 63 yards past. You've got to run better than that. Do you have any ball control against almost anybody, particularly Nebraska? Here's that short slant pass that's going to work for about six yards to Ashonde Smith. And that'll move him up to about the 20-yard line. Keith, you make an excellent point when you say you have to have better uh, production if you're going to have that ball control. But they have had the ball now seven minutes in this first quarter. So they've, they've almost split the time. They've been effective throwing the short passes and then trying to run, but the running game just hadn't opened up yet. 
Second down and two with June Henley, the single back, and he's got the ball, young man from Columbus, Ohio. And he gets up near the first, passes the first down marker, and will have it up around the 25-yard line. Terrell Farley makes the tackle. I thought Farley may have gotten up near his face mask. Take a look at this. Now, Farley has great lateral movement, plays inside out, reads the ball the whole time, never even comes close to getting blocked. No, he never get. He was on the ball. Good play by Farley. You know, he's the junior college transfer All-American, leads in tackles, second in stack. Ball just outside the 24-yard line of Kansas. First down for the Jayhawks. Levine, single back. Double wide, top of your picture. Mark Williams throws to his back. Levine, he's got some room on the corner and goes for another Jayhawk. First down, Michael Booker forced him out of bounds. Oh, again, moves the chains out to about the 37-yard line for the Jayhawks. Kansas came into this ball game, said that they wanted to dink and dunk against Nebraska, keep them a little bit off balance. And the most successful thing they've done, Keith, are the little short save passes. Here's the little swing pass to your back, but they've gone to the tight end. They've gone on the quick slant. Passes that don't take a whole lot of time. Hornhuskers are not a shutout defense. A lot of people have scored a lot of points on them. But generally, that has come when it hasn't mattered so much. On first down, ball is handed to Levine. Takes one tackle, picks up about five yards on the carry. That is the end of the first quarter of play. With the Nebraska Cornhuskers, number one in the nation, leading Kansas 14-0. Here are a couple of fellows who are sitting out in the sunshine. Looking at themselves. Hey, whoa, how come you guys are sitting out there freezing to death? Mama won't let them in the house. <laughs> <laughs> To the 35-36 yard line goes June Henley on second down and five, so they'll be looking at third and short as we start the second quarter of play. Keith, take a look at the statistics, and of course the first line that you see will be the most important, and that's the score, 14 to nothing. But then watch this. KU, more plays, KU, more first downs, running's about even, more passing yards, total yards. Here's the biggest one right here. Two turnovers. That's the story of the ball game. 14 points scored off of it. This is what the score is, 14 to nothing. Third and two. That's good for the first down. As Isaac Berg made the catch of the bullet pass, lost his footing, but staggered to the 40. Boy, he almost broke it, too. These are key plays from the first quarter, Keith. They went for it on fourth down and eight. Big play by the defense. Knocking it away, that was Phil Ellis who knocked it. Then the fumble by Bird. Watch this, the ball gets kicked. Then, of course, what happened the last fumble? When they ran the ball around that side, Henley let it go. Nebraska gets it back, two turnovers. You go for it on fourth and eight, you don't get it. Nebraska leads 14 0. Kansas ball, first down. LT Levine, single back now. The ball is near the 40 of Nebraska. KU's moved it pretty well. They throw it out to the back. Levine, Levine is knocked out of bounds at the 31-yard line, close to another first down. You know, Keith, other than that one big Frazier run, KU has almost dominated here That's today. Right. They, yep. They've been able to move the ball effectively. The defense has made some stops. And Tommy Tom. Frazier's in the locker room. We don't know what's wrong. Nobody will tell us anything. They probably don't know themselves. He left after the last series. Brooke, ba Brooke Beringer started warming up. Kansas has the ball right now. It is second down and one. Into the middle goes L.T. Levine, the 210-pound senior, and he makes it first down Kansas at the Nebraska 25-yard line. Boy, is that good to see. You were talking about his tap dance style and how he jitterbugs back there. This time he just jammed it right up the middle of the hole open. They had a trap block on, and they pick up the first. Williams, 8 of 11 passes so far in a ball game for 94 yards, and most of it is swing stuff, short stuff. Henley is your single back now. Williams steps out by himself. Now he has to pull it down and take off, and does. And the youngster from Concord, California, gets down to the 10-yard line, where it's first down and goal, Kansas. They're going to mark him short, just short of the 10. Nope, they put it right on the 10. Right on the 10. 
So it will be first and goal. Boy, I'll tell you, watch the offensive line. Everybody moves left. He goes right on what they call the waggle. All of a sudden, there's only one guy there. He says, hey, I can beat him. Boom, runs by him, picks up the first down. Huge play by Williams, showed his mobility. Great call by Glenn Mason. Let Nebraska run themselves out of the play. Tenth play, the ball started. Back up field. This time, the Husker defense swells up a little bit and comes through like a falling wall as Jamel Williams decks L.T. Levine with authority back around the 13-yard line. Boy, you said that emphatically, and that is exactly how I hit him. Right under the chin and put him on his back. That's one of those pancakes you were talking about earlier. <laughs> Booker comes back into the ball game. Michael Booker. And Mike Coleman comes out at a corner spot in case the Jayhawks decide to go to the air. They're now looking at second down and 13. Williams is back, has a little time. Down the middle it goes to Isaac Bird, and Bird will get down to the six-yard line before he is taken down. All right, Swanee, tell us about uh, Tommy Frazier. Well, Keith, he went back in the locker room. They retaped his right calf and ankle. On that last drive, he felt the tape job had slipped a little bit, and that right calf and right ankle have been bothering him throughout the week. So he just went in to retape it. I asked if he re-injured the leg. They said, no, he did not re-injure it. He just wanted to change the tape job. Keith? Okay, thank you. Third and goal from the six. Williams has a man in the end zone, doesn't see him. He had his tight end, Jim Moore, wide open. He threw the ball to L.T. Levine, and he is short of the goal line by maybe two yards. Keith, you were so right. I want you to watch the tight end, because here's what Moore does. He goes in and just sits here. This guy runs out. Now watch where the tight end is. You said he was wide open, slips by the linebacker. Now freeze it right there. Look at this. He is wide open. Williams looks. It's a touchdown for Kansas. Woo. Opportunity lost. They'll go for the field goal. Jeff McCord, sophomore out of Mesquite, Texas. The Texans have a corner on the kicking market this year, don't they? All over the country you find them. Hold is good, the kick is good. And so at 11.23 to go in the first half of play, Jayhawks get on the scoreboard. Nebraska leads 14-3. Drawing pictures on the sideline. Talking, talking, coaching, coaching, teaching, teaching. You know, Nebraska looks a little bit out of sync, Keith. They just don't look like they've got that same flame that they normally have when they play. Well, you can't be that way every Saturday, though, can you? And go to school and put up with all everything else that goes with living? No, but that's why this is the number one team in the nation. You have a bad day, you don't have that flame, and you still lead 14-3. to three. That's right. Jeff McCord will kick it off. Nebraska's only picked up 34 yards rushing so far in this ball game. Remember, they came into this game averaging 426. Ball's bouncing around now as McCord's kick is quite short. Picked up at about the 14-yard line by Damon Benning. And Benning is up across the 20 and out to about the 24. Monday the Marshall goes undercover as a lonely scientist to bust a mail order love for money scam. Well, Jeff Fahey stars in a brand new episode of the Marshall. And on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, the division-leading Pittsburgh Steelers host their old rival Cleveland Browns, soon to be the Baltimore Browns, I guess. Don't miss Action Monday here on ABC. Brooke Beringer is the quarterback for Nebraska. Frazier's not on the field. The Cornhuskers leading by a score of 14 to nothing. Frazier a little gimpy. I put Beringer into the ball game now. Uh, Beringer, the senior from Goodland, Kansas, who was such a dramatic personality a year ago when Tommy Frazier was injured. Oh, what a great play by Keith Rogers, the outside linebacker, to come up, take on the blockers, force the play back inside where there was pursuit. And make it second down 11 because of Rogers' play. The tailback yard so far today, Phillips is minus one and Green plus two. Not much from the tailback so far. Inside, however, there seems to be a little daylight for the fullback, Jeff Makovica. And he will take it out near the 40 and should have a first down for Nebraska. Well, Nebraska runs that play better than anybody in the country. They pull, they trap you, they run the option. You know, when you run the option with the fullback, the 
pitch man and the quarterback, it causes you to play assignment defense. Somebody has to be assigned to the pitch man, the dive man, and the quarterback. And when that happens, you're locked on man-to-man -man in coverage, which can hurt you. It also thins out your defense. Lawrence Phillips is your single back. Frazier, look at him go. No, it's Beringer back into the traffic. So Brooke Beringer in relief for Frazier shows he can pick him up and hook it too as he moves up to the 49-yard line. Not as quick as Frazier, obviously. No, but he can move it. And you know what? When he looks at this tape and hears you calling Frazier, he's going to take that as a compliment. He's going to say, hey, look, I was running as good as Frazier. <laughs> he came out of that pretty well off the snap. <laughs> he did it some last year, late in the season, when uh, people were ganging up. He's a good player. He's 7-0 as a starter. Six foot four. Having that much size to haul around negates somewhat your agility. That's, That's a fumble. Bounce. That's on the ground, it's a live ball. It's recovered by Kansas. Number 41, Dick Holt. So it's a lateral as Beringer is hit, trying to deliver the ball to his back. The ball did not reach the target, and it was a live ball falling into the hands of Kansas. And that is the first Nebraska turnover in 17 quarters. You have to go all the way back to September. Here comes Rogers with the pressure, though. Look at this. He puts the pressure on him, and then the ball is backwards. You heard me yell. See, that was my old defense coming out in me here because I knew this was a fumble, and everybody has to get onto it. Now, watch Holt come flying over here. He realizes it's a fumble and gets down on it. Very smart. Don't pick it up and try to run. Just cover it. Give your offense good field position. And so that long string of quarters without a turnover comes to an end for Nebraska. And Tom Osborne warned everybody coming in. It's hard to win in Lawrence. Williams on the run. Throws incomplete out of bounds. So Mark Williams getting fierce pursuit. And uh, Jared Tomich had him in his sights. Yeah, watch this. You know, here's a guy that's a finalist for the Defensive Player of the Year for Sporting News. I'll show you why. Williams is going to feel this. After he releases it, it should have been a face mask. Five-yard face mask, incidental, but no call. Tomich with a lot of pressure. Look at him. 6'2", 250 pounds. He was a walk-on. 9.29 to go in the first half of play. Second down and 10, LT Levine. The single back. Mark Williams looks. He's got his tight end hiding down there again. Can't get it to him as Oshande Smith makes the grab for short yardage. Did you see how quickly Smith got down? Found himself between the linebacker and the safety. Knew he was going to take a hit, so he went down quickly. They get third down and seven now for Kansas. Mark Williams has had his look to the sidelines and got his play. It's Levine in the backfield. We got four wideouts now. Two at the top, two at the bottom of the picture. Pressure coming, passes away. Thrown to Levine, balls on his hip. Loses it out of bounds. Well short of the first down, and it is going to be ruled an incomplete forward pass. He was running with the ball in his hip pocket. I think that's a bad call. I think he did have it. He didn't He didn't have it in the conventional manner, nope. but Smith certainly had it. Watch this now. Well, he carried it two yards. He sure did. Watch. He pins it against his back. Here he goes. He loses the control, and there's Levine now. Has it in his back. He just, as you said, put it in his hip pocket, but he definitely had possession and ran several steps. But it is fourth down now. It didn't matter. He didn't have the first down anyway, whether it was possession or not. Watch the fake punt. Simmons has been a good one all year. All over his head. Another mistake. And Nebraska's in business. First down at the Kansas 23-yard line. Told you it'd be a fake punt. My goodness. Sean McDermott, who is a tight end freshman, does the snapping and had that one get away. Boy, everything that could go wrong against this club has. This ball is just out of here. They lose 36 yards on this. I mean to tell you, this is the worst situation you could possibly have against Nebraska. And, and Simmons did exactly what he had to do, just got down on it. Or else Nebraska would have picked it up and scored on that one. Tommy Frazier is back. And they'll play it inside with Lawrence Phillips, and he'll pick up about three yards on the carry. 
Lawrence Phillips out of West Covina California 215 pounder Tommy Frazier is from Palmetto Florida special teams having a rough day yeah, they are aren't they set him up in a power eye now and Frazier looks around on second down and six and comes this way Phillips carries, gets a couple of yards. Good defensive flow by Kansas and Dewey Houston, the third. Comes through to make the tackle. Number 87, Mark Gilman, coming off, limping off in some pain. So he's either hurt an ankle or hurt a knee. And he's off the field, the tight end for the Cornhuskers. Sheldon Jackson, a redshirt freshman, goes in at tight end for the Cornhuskers. He's the, probably the best pass receiver of all the Nebraska tight ends. One of the best. Now time. Called by Kansas. So Nebraska came up and showed him a new four wide set and the Jayhawks said whoa, whoa let's talk. Not Memorial Stadium but yet a memorial here on Veterans Day. I'm standing on top of the Campanile Tower built in 1950 as a memorial to veterans who were Kansas University students who died in that war and all of their names are listed below there are 53 bells here their names are listed on that and it's one of three memorials here on campus dedicated to those men and women who died giving their service to their country the stadium for world war one the campanile for world war two and the vietnam war wall miniature wall with all the names over on campus keith all right, 20 yesterday, Marine Corps birthday, obviously. Semper Fi, happy birthday, old Marines everywhere. And here's Tommy Frazier looking around. He's got all day to throw and finally does throw complete to Sheldon Jackson down around the 15-yard line. Not enough for the first. They kept him in front. That's what they want to do, but somehow they've got to get pressure on Fraser Thorin came clean he had a shot at him but was afraid he was going to run and didn't want to lose his leverage so it's fourth down and uh, Chris Brown is not out there well they're going on fourth and two now Kansas needs to count their people they may have 12 people out there they had one go off and two come in <laughs> timeout call at 6.45 to play in the first half. So it's fourth and two now after Kansas had the timeout and got the right number of folks on the field. And Tommy Frazier sets him up. Option, Frazier back into the middle is stuck. Oh. Jayhawks jammed the middle. Brett McGraw held his ground. Kevin Kopp and Dewey Houston the third. Got Frazier. And the Jayhawks have held. I'm going to tell you right now, Kansas is outplaying Nebraska, Keith. That defense is playing. They're doing everything Glenn Mason asked them to do. And then some. Special teams have hurt them today. They had a bad call earlier. But look at this. This is getting after it. Short yardage. Go ahead and roll it. And look at this. As soon as he turns on that reverse pivot, he is hit behind the line of scrimmage. You've got Houston, McGraw, Cop, guys forcing some pressure. The outside guys are keeping them contained. So it's a big play for Mike Hankwitz's troops, the defensive coordinator here at Kansas now. Mark Williams, that little quick slant pop, good out to the 25-yard line to a Shonda Smith. And the pickup is about eight yards. Six and a half minutes to go in the first half. Keith, here's a statistic that'll open everybody's eyes. We talked about KU's defense dominating. How about this? Amon Green has two yards. Lawrence Phillips has four for the day. That's it. Second and two. June Henley. He is the deep back, has the ball. Cuts his way through the traffic. Close to the first down at about the 27 yard line. Coming up, Prudential Halftime Report. John Saunders, John Spagnolo scores, highlights all that. Plus the second installment of the exclusive coaches poll. The country's top coaches responding to questions regarding the top issues in college football. You haven't got time to handle all the top <laughs> issues in college football. There are a lot of them. <laughs> It'd take you four weeks. 
You know, Keith, I'm looking at Mark Williams. He's not the prototype quarterback of the 90s. You know that? He's only six foot one, but he's efficient. He gets the job done, and he's playing pretty well today. Well, he was hurt in his senior uh, season, and uh, not all that widely recruited, though UCLA wanted him, but then he got hurt in his senior season. They backed off. He went to Diablo Valley Junior College and wound up here at Kansas. Had two very good years. And on the first and ten play, that little swing pass is good for about six yards to L.T. Levine. Actually spent that year off after high school, as you mentioned. Sacking groceries. Sacking groceries. <laughs> Getting his bad elbows some exercise. Well, yeah, he had to get it, get it back in shape because it was pretty well damaged. But it was his left elbow, not the throwing arm. Had those cans of beans, one in the bottom of the bag, using it like a football. Call it second down and five. Williams now 13 of 18 for 120 yards. He's throwing again. He's got a man. That's Isaac Bird, and he's got the first down. Caught it right in front of Tyrone Williams, and here's John Saunders. Uh, well, here we go. Uh, something didn't work. Somebody's button didn't push. 43-yard line, 5-10 to play in the first half. First and ten for the Jayhawks. Nebraska leading 14 to three. And all out of turnovers and mistakes by Kansas. That ball is on the hands of the intended receiver. But it would have been a virtual impossible catch for Isaac Bird. Now let's try and see if we can get a hold of the folks in New York. Connection has been made this time, Keith. Illinois and Ohio State. Bobby Hoying from the 14 to Demetrius Stanley. He gets it across for the touchdown. 17-0. The Buckeyes trying to make a statement. They have the lead. Keith. Well, they have to score some points. I think that Ohio State realizes if they win big today and Kansas gives Nebraska a hard time, they could be in first place when the poll comes out. It seems to be the way it works these days. The pass is completed to L.T. Levine, and he has about four yards. You know, we talked about Mark Williams' mobility, and we saw some of it there. He actually tripped coming back from center, regained his balance, and still got the ball out to Levine and got some pretty good yardage out of it, positive yardage. See, the first half possessions, Keith, with Kansas. Obviously, the result, they give it up on downs. They punt. They fumble. Field goal. That's the fourth field goal in nine games against Nebraska. That's it. Then they lose it on downs, and they over-snap the punter. It is third down and five. Did he work? Did he catch it? He got it. Oh, I don't know how. June Henley took it right off of his shoelaces and was able to hold on to it and pick up the first down. Hey, Keith, this is Lynn. You were talking about Ohio State earlier. I couldn't help but remember what Glenn Mason said when we talked to him yesterday, talking about this game against Nebraska. says he hasn't heard a whole lot from the KU fans. He's heard more from the alumni because he went to Ohio State about him knocking off Nebraska to make Ohio State number one. Well, he's an alumnus. Last time that uh, Kansas beat Nebraska, Glenn Mason was a freshman at Ohio State University. That's Deep going back Ohio a while. State. There's a little bit of a delayed action out of the backfield as they work out of the shotgun, and Levine will pick up a couple of three yards with four minutes and ten seconds to play in the first half. 14-3, the Cornhuskers lead. You know, Keith, this is the first time I've had a chance to see Levine and Henley in person. We watched them together on tape. I'll tell you something, they are fairly impressive. As a matter of fact, you know, Henley, Rick Neuheisel said that Henley was the best running back he has seen this year. Levine's back there right now. Four wideouts. Williams looking around. Now throws. He's got him. And Smith can't hold it. He might have had a touchdown if he'd have seen him a second or so sooner. Ashondi Smith could not reel it in. That is incomplete. I'm going to tell you something, too. That is unusual for Smith. He's the guy that's led the team in receiving his first three years. He's got 32 this year. This ball is actually a little bit underthrown. He had to readjust, but the ball hit him right in the number six on the chest. That could have been the problem. He let it get into his body instead of catching it with his hands. Time of possession in the ball game. Now two to one in favor of KU. Third down and nine. Ball on the Nebraska 44. 
Pressure coming, pass away, pass is complete. Good for a first down to June Henley. Ball will go to the 35-yard line and move the change for Kansas. It's a great game plan. They're keeping Nebraska on their heels. They've got their head on the swivel right now. They're using the quick passes, the slant, the safety fouls, the little passes out of the backfield. Right now, they've broken all tendencies and gotten away from what they've been doing the last couple of games, mixing the plays very well. And Nebraska, defensively right now, is off balance. Kansas has run 41 plays in the ball game. Nebraska has run 19. Look at Pat Rule, the offensive coordinator. Had a great talk with him this week. Williams passes away to the tight end. And he's taken down at the 33. Jim Moore. You know, when I talked to Pat during the week, Keith, he was talking about patience being the key for the offense. And yet they have to have quick passes to avoid the pressure. And they wanted to, what he said, mix and match and be unpredictable. And I think he's accomplished that so far. Second down and eight. His first name is Goldus. <laughs> He's a good coach. Very good coach. LT Levine, the single back. He's bobbling the ball and finally possesses it down at the 31 yard line for a pickup of two yards. Next Saturday, college football doubleheader here on ABC Sports. Michigan, Penn State, Virginia Tech, Virginia. They do it at noon. Then at 3.30 Eastern, most of you'll see Colorado, Kansas State, Arkansas, LSU. There will be other regional action. Check a local listing or your cable operator for a game that we might not have mentioned that might be available to you. Keith, you know, in the last play, Levine was bobbling the ball so much, I thought he was going to hand the ball to Terrell Far Farley. <laughs> too. Levine's got seven catches now, though. He's still in the backfield on third down and six. It's another completion. It's another first down inside the 20-yard line to June Henley. So that quick pop pass is working. Receivers are getting good separation, too. They were working on Mike Minter, the role with a strong safety. Just got to the inside of him and says, if I'm even, I'm leaving. And he's put the ball right there a couple of times. Now that they've spread that defense, don't be surprised if they start coming banging a quick opener on him in the middle now. Levine still the deep back. Jose Friday, the white man to the right side. They ah. go the other way, and he throws it right into the hands of Tyrone Williams. Nebraska interception, Cornhusker ball, 22-yard line. I tell you, this is a terrible, terrible play. It's a bad throw because they're in a zone. Now you see Williams just kind of rolling and playing underneath the receiver. Bird's already behind him, but he's got the safety back there to help him, but the ball's just poorly thrown. Williams got a gift that time. Williams, a contender for the Jim Thorpe Awards. This will pat some of the statistics. He went to the wrong side, Demi. He had his man over here on the right side. He's had the tight end a lot, Keith, and yep. hasn't seen him. 14 plays, interception. That's a will breaker. The Nebraska Cornhuskers take over first down with a minute and 40 seconds to play in the first half. Ryan Schuster is now in at fullback. Al Amon Green is in at tailback. He came into the ball game today needing just three yards for a thousand yards as a true freshman and now he needs one. So we've played almost a half and he's done very little so far. But he is the deep back right now. And Tommy Frazier's going to throw it. Down the middle, it is incomplete. Pick and off. it is intercepted on the ricochet by Maurice. Now they're going to call it. No. Oh, boy, that was close. I thought Gaddy had his hands under it. Well, the deep man, the back judge, said no. The ball was intended for Brandon Holbein. Jamie Harris, the cornerback, defending on the play. Gaddy goes for the interception. Looked like he might have had it, but the deep official said no. Well, the back judge is right there, but watch the pass is not a well-thrown pass. It's actually behind it. Now watch Gaddy, 24, see if he gets under it. That is a catch. That's an interception. That's an interception. He should have gotten credit for it. Yep. He intercepted the ball. He was clearly under the ball. Absolutely. That's he, a terrible break for He Kansas. rolled over, and the back judge couldn't see it because his body blacked it out. But nonetheless, what's done is done, and here comes the penalty flag on top of the play on third down and seven.
Steve Juszczyk will tell us what the penalty is. Incidental face mask. Face mask. Defense. Five more Five yards. So the Jayhawks down. make another mistake, and here's another score update from John. Coming up on the Prudential Halftime Report, three of the top five teams in action will have scores and highlights. Part two of our coaches poll, and I'll be joined by John Spagnola. It's all coming up on the Prudential Halftime Report. One minute to go in the first half. Ball at 37, Frazier back, airing it out. Down the middle is throws behind the man. That's Riley Washington out of Chula Vista, California, who is a speed burner, but he threw it behind him. 5'9", 170-pound junior. In his defense, though, even though the ball was thrown behind him, it was catchable, but Washington was looking back into the sun. You can see the shadows on the field. And I'm sure that had something to do with it. Take away the mistakes by Kansas. I think the Jayhawks might very well be leading this football. It looks like it's one of those uh, slightly off days so far for the Cornhuskers. Even though they do lead 14 to 3. Well, give Kansas a lot of credit too. They've Absolutely. whipped their butts. Yes, they have. Look at the blocking on the corner for Green. That'll take care of his 1,000 yards. So Amon Green, as a true freshman now, has run past 1,000 yards. He totals 1,010. First down, Nebraska, move your team. He's on to the fourth Big 8 freshman ever to run for 1,000 or more yards in the season. It's amazing to me, Keith, that Nebraska is just round-robin running backs. I mean, Green runs for over 1,000. Of course, you know what Phillips has done. He was a Heisman Trophy candidate. Benning and Childs, he can take that Heisman Trophy with Frazier and the rest of those backs and just don't put a name on it. Just put a Nebraska back. 44 seconds to play in the first half. At 9 o'clock this morning, the temperature in Lawrence, Kansas, was 20 degrees. Clear and sunny. As we kicked off, the temperature was about 32 degrees. And now as the shadows reach out across Memorial Stadium, it's probably less than that. Keith, you look at the turnovers, you look at the mistakes on the kicking game by Kansas. You take those away, and it's been all Kansas pretty much. Yes, right. But as you said, <laughs> Great teams win on bad days. No, they do. That's right. And we keep saying if you take away the, I mean, if, if, and buts, you know that story. For Kenny Nuts, what a party we'd have. Ball is at the 48 yard line. Where it is first down. So K State, Bill Snyder's ball club that thrashed Kansas, but in turn was roundly whipped by Nebraska winning today at Iowa State. You know, it's a great time to be in this part of the country. I mean, KU is number 10. You talked about Kansas State. Kansas basketball is number two in the country. Kansas City Chiefs are 8-1. The Big 12 is going to give the Big 8, i.e., the addition of the four schools from Texas. That's going to become a very dramatic conference, I think. I agree with you. In college sports. A force. Yep. So on first and 10, with 44 ticks remaining, the Huskers go to the shotgun. Give it to the up man, Green. Fumble the football. Kansas man has it in his arms, and the Jayhawks have recovered it. Second turnover for Nebraska today. You mentioned they hadn't committed a turnover since the month of September. 16 quarters, but they are not sharp today. Well, that's the first time we have seen this particular play. It was Amon Green, and they try and snapped it to the short man, and I think he probably got caught in traffic. Yeah, he did. He runs right into his own center, Aaron Graham, 54, right there. Boom! You run into a guy that weighs 290 pounds. It's going to cause a jolt. It did, and he lost the ball. And so Kansas gets a chance here with 38 seconds to play. June Hindley is deep. This is a new alignment. Williams back time gets it away to the sidelines. Pass is good to Asande Smith. He's out of bounds, stopping the clock at 33 seconds remaining. Kansas with no timeouts remaining. Remember, they had to spend two down here on defense some time back. But the clock stops as you move the change in college football, remember, and it'll be first down at the Nebraska 42. And they come quickly to the ball. 
Referee rolls the clock. They're ready to go. LT Levine, the deep man. Williams looks around. Gets it off down the middle. The pass is completed to Jose Friday, who is the other tight end. And Friday will move it about eight yards, and the Nebraska players shake it up on the play. Michael Booker slow to get back to his position, but he does not get a timeout call. Keith, no timeouts left. You can't go over the middle. You have to go to the outside. Now he pops it into the ground to stop the clock at 11 seconds. Can't believe they went like that. An incomplete pass would help you for more than that. Right. No timeouts left. You have to go to the sidelines to stop it or get the first down, which automatically stops the clock to move the chain. Yeah, any receiver going downfield has to go beyond the mark. Otherwise, he shouldn't get the ball. There's Pat Rude making the call. Jeff McCord, the place kicker for Kansas, long field goal of the year, 46 yards. They're not in that range yet. They need about 10 more yards, Keith. But they have no timeouts to get him on. Got 11 seconds to fool with, and down he goes. And penalty flag. Clock stops five seconds, and you got a face mask call. This looks like it's going to be flagrant two, 15-yarder. That could put him in field goal range. Could very well put him down where McCord could reach. Costly penalty. Personal foul. How big is it, though? We don't know until he tells us or walks it off. Well, just watch the way he grabs it and pulls on it, and that'll tell you it's not incidental. He steps up. Now, here comes the hand. Boom. Doesn't let go. That's got to be 15 yards. Goes from the line of scrimmage, 15 yards, 15. and move it down. It'll put him in field goal range. Now, it also stops the clock. You get your kicker on. You have a chance to get three points out of it. Jared Tomich made that mistake for Nebraska. Ball is at the 22-yard line and the cords on the field. 39-yard field goal try. He kicked one today from 19 yards. He's two out of four from this distance this year. The holder is uh, Matt Jarner. The clock has run out. Do you so believe that? No time remaining, but uh, that's not correct. I didn't hear him blow the whistle and put it back in play, did he? No. I don't think that's right, is it? Aren't they entitled to the play? Nebraska's leaving the field. No, but he's got a whistle. Besides that, they are leaving. You can't end the you can't end the half like that. The officials seem confused. Number one, I don't think you can end the half on a penalty. Number two, he didn't blow the ball back in, and they're going to call it the half. Boy, Kansas got some bad calls in that first half. Twenty, I think we need an explain an explanation of that. Well, Ed Swan is talking to them, so we are Steve Juszczyk, and we'll pass that information on to you as why they did not allow Kansas the field goal. Confusion at the end of the first half of play as Kansas had an opportunity for a short field goal try. Now let's roll the tape and listen. whistle and now it's three two one the half is over there was no visible sign clearly made but the whistle did sound and here's Lynn Swan to explain it yes Keith I talked to the referee Steve used to check he said there was five seconds on the clock he put it in play and started it they had no timeouts they couldn't stop it and that's what you should do if there were zero seconds on the clock then they would have had to stop it and let another play take place before the half was in it but because the five seconds was on he put it in play let the clock start and it just ran out of time Glenn Mason understood that and was as he went into the locker room Keith all right well as it was explained to everybody I mean it was just a crazy way to, to end the half and boy Glenn Mason hadn't gotten a break yet not yet his ball club trailing by 11 points will kick it off to Nebraska at the goal line it's Damon Benning on the return to the 25 to the 35 to the 43. And so the Cornhuskers with a 43 yard kickoff return by Benning start with great field position. The Huskers were not terribly splendid in the first half. Batting down the hatches because this is 
the most explosive quarter for Nebraska. Look at this. It has been KU other than the score. I mean, these folks, 48 plays, 15 first downs, 15 rush. They have dominated. Put it on the 42-yard line for Nebraska, and third quarter, they're tough. Remember that. They hand it off inside, but the Jayhawks swarm McAvicka and bring him down. Dewey Houston, the first man to get there. Information now on Fitzgerald, the fine Northwestern linebacker. John Saunders with an update. Keith, when we reported Northwestern's win over Iowa, we told you Pat Fitzgerald left the game with an injury. At the time, it wasn't confirmed. It has been confirmed now. He left with a broken left leg. He leads the Big Ten in tackles with 130. Keith. Wow, is that a loss. Whew. He was having a great season. Here's the option play. The pitch back to Amon Green. Shook a couple of tacklers. Turned it up to you. And rambles on down to the Kansas 40-yard line. You know, we told you in the beginning of the game that uh, Nebraska had to execute the win. Well, I'll tell you this. They had a couple of turnovers in that first half, and the only uh, five first downs. You see the rushing yards, 75. And Green has been kept in check, 16 yards. Phillips, three carries, four yards. The defense stopped Henley, stopped Lamine. The defense really hadn't stopped Kansas yet. Kansas has stopped itself. All right, the Corn Huskers with the first down at the Kansas 40-yard line. Tommy Frazier looking around. He's got all day to throw it, throws it, and the pass is completed to Cluster Johnson. It is another Nebraska first down, down near the Kansas 24-yard line. Keith, look at this. Passing Frazier four for six, but more importantly, he also ran for 33 yards and got the touchdown. Green, six carries 16 yards and Phillips three carries four yards as you look at the, the leaders throughout the uh, the ball game but it looks now like Nebraska coming out in the second half is back in sync they have been devastating in the third quarter this is green over the left side he spiked as he gets to about the 20 yard line by Dick Holt the inside linebacker and Houston I don't think it's any big surprise that Houston is playing well. He runs all over the field. Thor, in number five, he's one of the leading tacklers anyway, came into the game with one sack and 35 tackles. He, too, is playing well. Defensively, they've been running the ball, getting pursuit, and they've been stopping the option for the most part. But they're having troubles on this drive. Time call by the Cornhusker. So they spend an early timeout. Nebraska struggled offensively in the first half. Punt, punt. The touchdown was set up by a Kansas fumble. The fumble, the downs, and the fumble. And then change the page and look at this. In the first half, they had two turnovers. Nebraska did. They had only five first downs. The third down conversion, the one, that was set up by a penalty. So Nebraska really struggled offensively. They're coming out here now. And Green and Phillips struggled in the first half. Didn't get the yards. But now they're starting to move this ball. And things look to be back in sync. On second down and six, the ball on the Kansas 20-yard line. Tommy Frazier fakes it, keeps it, looks down the middle, lets it go to the five-yard line. The pass is caught by Fluster Johnson, and it's first and goal, Nebraska. So are the Cornhuskers looking very crisp for the opening kickoff of the second half, leading 14 to three. Take a look at this play again. You'll see he fakes play action one way, then rolls away from it. What he did is he brought Johnson, dragged him all the way across the field, and he just outran Jamie Harris. The ball was thrown in front of him and not behind him. He probably could have scored. They put it on the six, where it's first and goal with Green and McAvicka in the backfield. <laughs> Frazier still got it. Pops it into the end zone. It's batted away, and it is incomplete. Going after big Sheldon Jackson, his tight end, who's six foot four, tried to get a mismatch out there on the corner. Harris is just five nine and a half, five ten. Just all he has to do is throw it high and let him have a shot at it. Second and goal. Defensive changes. Big guys go out. Little guys come in for Kansas. That puts them into a six DB alignment. Looks like. Frazier down the line with the option. Hit at the five. Drags to the one-yard line. 
He almost scored, reached out to the goal line, and almost broke the plane with the football. Keith Rogers had a hold of him, and he just kept dragging him. That's the strength of Frazier at 210 pounds. KU came in, and they tried to run a blitz, but they ran it to the right side, and the ball came to the defensive left. Then look at this. Frazier should have pitched the ball because Rodgers never got fooled, stayed with the quarterback, and made the tackle. Not a strong tackle because Frazier dragged him up to the one. It's third and goal from the one. Touchdown. Hershon Jackson. Number 34 gets the touchdown. So the tight end slips into the corner of the end zone, and it's easy for Tommy Frazier. Keith, you know how we told you effectively they run, they run, they run. Long, long defenses get sucked into that. They don't pick up the man into the flat. Holt, number 41, was supposed to. He was looking for the run and never saw him slide into the flat into the corner of the end zone. Chris Bound for the extra point. It's good. 42 touchdowns by passing breaks David Holmes' Nebraska school record. Going to be interesting now, Keith, to see if Kansas can come back and not fold the tents down 21 to 3. They played well all day. Bad breaks, fumbles, turnovers have hurt them badly, but. See if they can come back and get on the board. Cornhuskers asking the 20 odd thousand uh, folks wearing red to stand up and let them hear from them as they have assumed a 21 to 3 lead. 50,300, first sellout of the season here at Memorial Stadium at the University of Kansas. High kick by Brown. It'll be a little short at about the nine yard line at Smith. Up through the first wave into his own man got feet tangled up and fell down up around the 29 yard line Monday on ABC's NFL Monday Night Football Neil O'Donnell and the Pittsburgh Steelers against the Cleveland Browns and a man who ought to know something about this matchup at nine o'clock Eastern time is Lynn Swan oh, and I tell you Keith what I remember most is that it's a black and blue game everybody's hurting all over but one of the great matchups might be Carnell Lake we saw him when he was at UCLA He's taking over a corner for Rod Woodson. He's going to have a lot of receivers to cover on Monday night. Williams pass out of the backfield. LT Levine, and he picks up about three yards, up to about the 33-yard line. Staying with their game plan, showing a lot of patience. Take a look. We said at the beginning they had to keep Nebraska offense off the field. They did that. They dominated time of possession. And look at the number of plays. Defense, overload, pursuit, force turnovers. They've done that. They've turned the ball over. Nebraska's turned the ball over twice. KU has gotten that. They just haven't turned all these into positives and points. Second down and six. Got it away. On to Smith underneath the coverage as he turns up the at about the 38. He's taken down a yard short of his first down. Mark Williams comes up limping. He took a shot after he released it. You know, Williams had a pretty good half. Look at him. 22 of 31, 185 yards. He did have that one interception. The rushing, the running backs, not bad. They're not getting the production that we thought they, they would against Nebraska, but uh, they did pretty well. And again, they melted a lot of the clock and kept the offense of Nebraska off the field. They're going to bring the change in and stretch them out to see whether or not that might be a first down. Felt it was close enough that they didn't want to guess about it. By golly, I think it is. Keith, remember we talked about Pat Rule, and Pat Rule said we had to have patience. Well, they're staying with the game plan they came in with, and it's still being effective. See the defensive leaders, Booker and Williams, really being active. Farley's a guy like he can run. You know, he's not big. He's only six feet, 200 pounds. But he's all over the field. He was a track guy in high school, Keith. He was a major factor in the Colorado ball. First down for Kansas at the 39-yard line. Levine, the single back. He's got it. About three yards on the carry with 11 minutes. And uh, five seconds to go in the third quarter. 
Down in the middle of the highway, you have to run into the Peter brothers. Well, I tell you what, Peters and Peters, Jason and Christian, 300 pounds for Christian, 275 for Jason. How'd you like to have that grocery bill when you... And, you know, they've got a brother, a sophomore, Damian, who plays at Notre Dame. Those guys are big, they're active, they're strong. Jason bench presses 455 pounds. On second and seven, the pass is looped to the sidelines intended for June Henley, and it is incomplete coverage by Ty Williams. As well as this ball club has moved the ball offensively. It's ironic they only have three points. It's almost unbelievable. You see the fumble. They had the field goal. That was it. That's only the fourth field goal against Nebraska in the last nine games. They had the interception. So they really hurt themselves. It wasn't as much the Nebraska defense as it was KU themselves. Five out of nine on third down conversion so far today. A quick little slant pass works again. Isaac Bird, first down, Nebraska 41-yard line. Rule wanted Williams to get the quick release. He didn't want to take the pressure at all, so he's getting him in a three-step drop, and then he's just releasing the ball quickly on the slant. Watch this, one, two, three. He's in perfect rhythm, throws it. They're in a zone. He gets between the cornerback and the linebacker. It has worked every single time they've run that ball or that play. Levine has caught eight passes. Bird now, along with Smith, has caught five. And Levine, the deep man in the backfield. Williams gets it off. That should have been pass passed in the For June Henley and uh, Mike Minner shoved him right out of the pass pattern. And got away with it. Should have been pass interference, no call. The biggest interference there was Terrell Farley in Williams' face. I mean, he was right there. And I'm sure the call probably has something to do with whether or not the ball was catchable. Take a look at minute number 10. Here it is again. It's the quick drop. Boy, look at Farley. Boom! Right under the chin. Hands to the face. He's got to be careful with that or the throw a flag. That should have been a penalty. And then the ball itself, I thought there was interference. They're saying it was uncatchable, but how's anybody going to know if you hit Minter hits him before he even has a chance to slant in? Second down and 10 from the 41. To Levine, throw it hard, goes right through his hands and complete. That was pretty close to being a lateral. Here's some news about Ohio State from John Saunders. Well, Keith, the news is Ohio State is cruising, and they're cruising on the back of big number 27, Eddie George. 64 yards on this first and 10 for a touchdown. George is closing in on a 300-yard day, up around 270 right now. Keith, back to you. Do something. Robert George and uh, Tommy Frazier would be up around the top on that big trophy hunt now. Huh? Third down and 10. Williams better hurry up. That's an incomplete forward pass. Steve Juszczyk, the referee, called it instantly as his arm was uh, going forward. But again, it's Charlie involved. Wistrom, Tomich, and Farley. I'm telling you, there's a lot of pressure, but watch 43 run. This guy was a track guy in high school, 200-pounder. He's coming hard. He knows he's blindsided, and again, just pushes him down. That's a good play by Williams just to move the arm forward to get the incomplete. But Farley is big time. Juco College transfer, All-American. Darren Simmons comes in, be his second punt of the day. First one was not very good. It was 26 yards, but it did die inside the 20-yard line. He wants to kill this one deep. It's high in the air now. Somebody's got to get down there and catch it. And he gets away from him, gets away from him. Not quite, not quite. They knock it out of there. And they're going to put it down at about the six-yard line. So, good job by Simmons. And Nebraska takes over, leading 21-3. They marked this punt on the six-yard line, Keith. I'm not sure that it should have been. Take a look at his foot right on the line. You can't go into the end zone and come back out and hit that ball. Rodgers actually in the end zone. He's on that line and clearly in the end zone. I, he can't come back out and swat that ball. So Kansas finally gets a break. Ball is on the six for the first snap. 
They'll try the ground game, and the Jayhawks jump all over Amon Green. Just about the line of scrimmage. The offensive line surge of Nebraska has got to get you something, though. There's just too much of them. Boy, they're huge, too. The offensive line averages just under 300 pounds, and if you look at the front of Kansas, Gosh, Dirchers is only 255. McGraw is the biggest at 275, and Cops only 225. Terribly undersized. Second down and eight as they got two. Green again. And he's up close to the 14. And Green is shaken up. He took a pretty good wallop, too, as he was going down as about three Jayhawks hit him. And he's took one seemingly in the kind of the side or the back. And the top 25 today, you see that uh, this obviously number one is winning and number two is winning. Florida is later. Tennessee doesn't play. Northwestern won today, but they lost Pat Fitzgerald to a broken leg. Well, you know, when people look at that top 25 and they see Nebraska score, they'll never know that they didn't play well. No, you're right. See the Michigan won today five to nothing. Virginia just barely got by Maryland 21 to 18. Arkansas won again and I'll see them next week. Amon Green is walking off the field. Looks like he's going to be all right. Might be things a little bit. Lawrence Phillips steps in at tailback now on third down and three. Frazier on the option keeps it. First down and more. Tommy Frazier run out of bounds and there's a penalty flag. Thad Warren I think got a little vigorous as Frazier went out of bounds. There are several people on the sidelines and you can sort of just pick a guy who got Personal involved foul in Kansas came out in the out of bounds area is Thad Warren number 10 who was looked to be the man who threw the arm. Yeah emotion starting to get in the way of concentration now there's a breakdown watch Thorin 38 in the blue jersey he's supposed to take the quarterback but he gets locked up on a block and nobody has the quarterback Frazier takes it up there's 38 finally comes into the picture but Frazier moves the chains now watch when he goes out of bounds here's a late hit that got everybody excited flags came flying that's the penalty right there yeah it's no question about it it was uh he had a step on the line and then they came the hat came in from Warren 44 yard line first down Phillips is the eye back with McAvick in front of him 21 three in Nebraska leading Frazier drops back to throw look deep but there's nobody out there and gives the ball off to Lawrence Phillips who gets it up to about the 45 here's Lynn Swan. Well, Keith, I'm standing behind the Nebraska bench, and right now they're working on Amon Green. They're cutting off the tape on his, on his left ankle. It's a sprain, and they kind of indicated it's a sprain on the inside of that ankle. Uh, I'm assuming they're going to retape it, see how he feels. He may go back in the ballgame. Keith? Right now, they're in a 21-3 posture and got four tailbacks behind him. They don't really have to play it. Actually brought five tailbacks here. You're only allowed to bring 66 on the road, 66 players. They've got 166 guys they dress for practice, Keith. This is Lawrence Phillips. And, uh, having not played now, this is only the second game since his suspension was lifted. He's not quite as nimble as he might have been if he'd played all season. I want to tell you, watching this offensive line is something special. Watch 54. Aaron Graham just come out, lock up. Boy, that's a big time play. Stays with him. Takes uh, takes him, and there's your pancake, Keith. Yep. Took cop and put him on his back. Third and six. Phillips four carries for six yards. Frazier looking around, throws it down the middle. It's picked off. Picked off by Mo Getty. And back he comes to the 41 yard line of Nebraska. Pass intended for Sheldon Jackson. Jackson never had a chance. Gaddy broke on the ball. This is the third turnover for Nebraska this afternoon. Now watch this. Never takes his eyes off of him. And here comes Gaddy with a great break on the ball. Jackson just never had a chance for the ball. 
and then Gaddy with a great return. He cut all the way across the field, tried to get some blockers, almost like a punt to set up a wall. And now Kansas has great field position at the 41. That's the first interception of Tommy Frazier in the last 100 attempts. Now let's see if the Jayhawks can cash in a break. So far, they haven't done it. Out of the shotgun, Mark Williams. Got a man absolutely lost over here. Jose Friday tied in. Knee hit the ground at the 23-yard line. If he doesn't lose his footing, he scores. That's his seventh. Very close to it. You're exactly right, Keith. He was so wide open, I think he was shocked. Watch him. This is his seventh catch of the year. He's a former wide receiver. Jose Friday now plays tight end, but the tight end's been open all day. But look, he has to come back for the ball, loses his balance. I think he's shocked that he's out there by himself. As soon as that knee hits the ground, that's dead. But you're right, there was absolutely nobody around him. They were in a zone, and nobody picked him up. Ball at first down, just outside the 22. LT Levine will lose back to about the 25 as Christian Peter had the penetration and decked him. And he's talking. He should be. He's a great player. All-American. Holding Kansas. Christian Peter just ran over his blocker. Glenn Mason is absolutely beside himself the way this day has gone. I mean, he's going to go home. I, if I were him, I don't think I'd even look at it. Because there hasn't been one single good thing happen all day, I don't think. He's still smiling, though, isn't he? Well, sort of. That might very well be more of a grimace. Watch his play again. Watch how Peter just dominated. I mean, he takes Cleve Roberts and runs right over top of him, 300-pounder. Roll it. Now stop it right here, and I'm going to tell you, here's 55. Here's Cleve Peters right here, 77, and he just gets right by him, runs by him, knocks him out of the way and makes the play. Mark Williams is sacked, loses the football. And it looks like the Jayhawks may have kept it as Jared Smith, the center, came back with him. And again, it's Christian Peter leading the defensive surge with his younger brother. And they are wreaking havoc right now on the KU offense. You know, he's had a sore knee. Didn't practice as hard as he normally does. But watch this again. He comes right over top of the tackle and just runs right over top of him. He's being held. He still fights through it and strips him. I want to tell you, he's given Roberts all he can handle. Roberts had his arm around his neck and still couldn't stop him. It is second down and 27 or 8. 28. Ball. And timeout. Kansas. 22 games. Well, in 1993, they came close. A face mask penalty helped Nebraska keep a drive alive that went on for their second score and Kansas missed late in the game on a two-point conversion and eventually the game went to Nebraska 21 to 20 and to this day Glenn Mason hates that face mask penalty call that he says was not deserved and I'll tell you this Nebraska was reminded all week about the last trip they made here to Lawrence that 21 20 game not very many good things have happened for the Jayhawks today. Williams is hit as he throws, and the ball goes right to the Cornhuskers. Phil Ellis, number 41, and there's another turnover. That's four for Kansas. Outstanding play by Ellis. They're in a zone, Keith, and he just read the play from the beginning. Look at this. He never looks off the receiver. Sees him in the zone. He's hit. The ball floats. And there's Ellis. Ellis is just getting back. You know, he had that broken bone in his foot earlier this season. Broke that foot uh, September 27th. Just getting back. And all he did was just get back to his zone. And the ball was thrown to him. Huskers come out at the 40. First down. Lawrence Phillips. The eye back. Runs up the middle. Finds daylight. Crosses midfield. First down. Nebraska. Keith, can you feel it slipping away? I think it left on the opening touchdown of the third quarter. Nebraska is so strong, so talented. We talked about the great teams being able to win on days when they aren't 
really uh, playing up to what they normally do. And to be honest, Nebraska has struggled at times, but this is a great football team. Well, they don't give him the first down. He's a half a yard short. They'll make it second down. Give it to the up back back of First down. And let's get some news about the mighty Plains of Auburn. Here's John. Keith, Stephen Davis started the season as a serious Heisman Trophy candidate. Fallen by the wayside a bit, but he's still a powerful runner. Nine yards on this one. His first of two touchdowns. 13-0 is the lead. Keith. They're playing between the hedges in Athens. You know, they're talking about the Heisman. 921 ballots went out this past Wednesday. They were mailed out. I know you like Tommy Frazier. <laughs> Tommy Frazier is setting up the throw. He's got a week to do it. Now he decides he'll get a little exercise. And he's finally out of bounds down at the 20 yard line, and the penalty flag follows the play. Where he went out of bounds. Well, there's obviously a penalty down there involving Frazier and the man that pushed him out. Well, he is special, isn't he? Face mask, inadvertent, five yards. We're talking about there between the hedges up at Athens. They're going to dig the hedges up and move them out of there for the Olympic soccer competition. Take a look at this again. Two-time Orange Bowl MVP. Semifinals for the Football News Offensive Player of the Year. Stands in. Now, doesn't see anybody. This is what his greatest asset is, is his mobility and escapability. He gets outside. Look at him follow his blocker. Boom, gives him a little extra, gets outside. Now, here comes the face mask, so they're going to tack it on and take it down inside the 15. Face mask was definitely... Look at that. Got him with the left hand. Who's that, Hammonds? Mm -hmm. First down at the 14-yard line. Give it inside the line. Phillips, and he goes to the five or close to it. And so the Huskers now are slashing away, trying to cash in the turnover. They lead 21 to 3 with four and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. And now Bratton is coming off the field, shaken up. Huge hole opened up by Graham, Taylor, and Ott right up the middle. The big red machine now starting to accelerate, going after its 23rd straight win. In their 34th consecutive winning the season. Phillips up the middle, touchdown. Kansas defense is wearing out. And the score builds to 27 to 3. I tell you, Phillips ought to go over right now and shake the hand of Jeff Makovica because uh, he threw one heck of a block right up the middle. Again, it was Taylor Graham and Ott. Oh, the fullback came up and just loaded it up and opened it. Bedwell holds it. Brown kicks it down the highway. 4.04 to go third quarter. Nebraska has scored 21 points off Kansas turnovers. Here's Lynn Swan. Well, Keith, you know, when Tommy Frazier was a, a freshman, you know, sometimes he'd take a ball, he'd run down that sideline, and you can see a little bit of hesitation in him. But today, when he gets his hands on the ball, he looks right, he looks downfield, when he makes a decision, and he just goes. Just like this play, he didn't have a receiver open. Instead of hesitating, he just took off, ran the ball, he makes a big play. Experience, and that's why I call him Tommy Osborne, because it's like having Coach Osborne behind that huddle on every play. You know, Swanee Frazier says he's playing the best he's ever played. He says he's reading defenses like he designed them. Boy, look at Taylor lock up Graham and Ott, and then here comes the block on the linebacker that you get from your fullback, and Phillips just walks in. Dr. Tom never in his best day ran as fast as Tommy Frazier. Not at Hastings College, I guarantee you. You know, they say Frazier runs a 4-6-40. I think he's faster than that. As fast as he needs to be. Chris Brown gets it off. It's high, but it's very short. It's a Shonda Smith. He gets through the first wave and can't do it. Taken down just outside the 25-yard line. 
John Hess made the tackle. They've had some pretty good returns today, but it's the best coverage we've seen in Nebraska this afternoon. Kansas is now in some deep trouble. Trailing by a score of 28 to 3, if they are to have any hope at all of keeping this thing fairly close, they've got to do something right about here. Well, and I think it's the time now that they have to leave the game plan. You know, they've got to start taking more chances and going yep. deeper. Yep. Not much difference between this and 50. Williams lets it fly. He's got Bird out there, and he can't come up with it. The coverage by Michael Booker. He hit him on the hand with it. But Booker was there to spoil it. And it'll be second down and 10. I want to finish my story about the hedges. Not that I'm sure anybody in Nebraska <laughs> or Kansas gives a wet about it. But uh, now we'll, after the replay, I'll try. Well, we said they had to start going longer. They did. The ball was a little bit underthrown. Bird still had a shot and probably could have made that catch. Booker never did see the ball, had his back to him. Well, maybe I won't. Go ahead, Keith. <laughs> Tell us about those hits. They're taking no, them out. Pass is thrown to the sidelines the other way, and again, it's Bird, the intended receiver, and he has no chance to get to it. Next Saturday, ABC's college football doubleheader starts with Michigan Penn State at noon Eastern and Virginia Tech against Virginia, then Kansas State. We'll be playing Colorado, Arkansas, LSU. There will be other regional action. Check your local listings or your cable operator or a game that might be available on pay per view. I'll tell you this you're looking at that Virginia, Virginia Tech game. With that win over Maryland today, Virginia now still has the lead in the Atlantic Coast Conference and can win the ACC outright. Pursuit from the backside. Went all the way around, Jared Tomich makes the tackle. Keith, you watch these guys. They tell you Tomich has been slowed down a little bit because he has a sore back. He bruised it against Colorado, and he's had some spasms. But he doesn't look any slower or any hurt, any more hurt than we've ever seen him. 6'2", 250, and you said he came all the way around and showed a great burst of speed to make the sack. You know what that means back there? Catch the ball. Don't let it get a roll. Four don'ts to the there. kicking game. Don't be off sides. Don't rough the kicker. And don't let the ball hit the ground and don't clip. And they do. They handle it. That's uh, Mike Pullman. So the mere fact that he caught the ball puts it up somewhere around the 40-yard line. If they had let it go, it's probably somewhere down inside the 20. Winds up a 37-yard punt. And once again gives Nebraska tremendous field position, something you just can't do against a ball club like the Cornhuskers. Nebraska in the first half had a total of 106 yards. Here in the third quarter, they've run up 139 yards. They've scored 14 points in this period. Well, when you figure that Nebraska beat Kansas State, what, 49 to 25, Kansas State beat Kansas 41 to 7, it's a 58-point differential. I think a lot of these fans expected that too when they came in. They said, well, we'll, we'll hope. <laughs> Gotta believe. Well, the, the kids played very well. It's just that they made those mistakes and Nebraska catched them in. No gain on that play. Here's money. Keith D. Bratton, who came off the field last time the uh, Jayhawks were on defense, has a left forearm injury. Now, the trainer said they wanted to take him over to Lawrence Memorial Hospital because that's where the nearest place is for an x-ray, uh, but they can't convince him to leave the bench area. <laughs> right now, they just crowded around him, and uh, they'd like to get him over there, but they'll wait and see if he'll give in. Keith? Second down and 10. Frazier throws a bad pass. He had all day to throw it. He just threw it, bounced it, on a hole by him, incomplete. He's waiting for Holbein to make that cut. Holbein went down a little bit deeper than I think he was supposed to. He was a 15-yard out. He went down about 20, 22 yards and had forced Frazier to hold it a little bit. You know, Holbein doesn't make a whole lot of catches, but he can block you. Mm. He's made some big catches. Yes, he you has. Know who hasn't seen the ball today at all is uh, Reggie Ball. <laughs> 
That's a completed pass down to about the 48-yard line to Cluster Johnson. Here again, John Saunders. Keith, and here again is Eddie George. This time takes a little pitch, 13 yards, 31 to 3 at that point. He is 285 yards on the ground, but Bobby Hoying back to pass to who else but Eddie George, his first ever touchdown catch. And here today on the ground, 285 yards. It's the best day ever in Ohio State history for a running back. Keith. Wow. Well, that's a fair statement, isn't it? The day after the ballots went out. I think he's put an exclamation point on his season. But Tommy Frazier, on the other hand, running with the ball right now and runs for another Nebraska first down. Tommy Frazier has now become Nebraska's all-time total offense leader, passing Jerry Taggy with 5,298 yards. You know, the problem, I, I think, with, with Eddie George and Hoying, they're both so good, both being considered for the Heisman, I think they're going to steal votes from each other, and that could hurt their chances. Yep. The other side, for Tommy Frazier, they haven't seen him that often in the East. And, you know, I think the big scores that they have at Nebraska cut his playing time down and lowered his numbers a little bit. 37, a couple of yards for Jeff Makovica. This issue has become relatively academic unless some something truly astounding happens very shortly. We're winding down toward the end of the third quarter. Number one Nebraska leads Kansas number 10 in the AP poll coming in 28 to 3. Key to this game early were turnovers by Kansas. The key now is just that uh, Nebraska has just worn them down. Now it's just a more physical situation and look at these numbers. They tell the tale. Well, there may be a little heartbreak involved there, too, you know, for the Jayhawks. The fortune, Lady Dame Fortune, has not been kind to them. Sheldon Jackson is begging for the catch, and I guess they're going to give it to him. Sheldon Jackson, at uh, 240 pounds, a redshirt freshman, 6'4", out of Diamond Bar, California. If he picks up on his blocking a little bit, he's the tight end of the future. Yeah. He's pretty good. I agree with that. He reminds me of Keith Jackson from Oklahoma. I mean, he's got that, that kind of size and certainly the mobility. You're right. He just has to work on some technique, but certainly there, but he's got the tools. First down at the 24. And the whistle. Tommy and Frazier wants Nebraska a timeout. timeout. Here's 20. All right, you would think that Coach Mason, with all the responsibilities of playing number one Nebraska, would have enough to do, but he's still a parent, and he had to watch his kids participate last night in the semifinal game. His daughter, Chris, was the cheerleader. His son, Patrick, Number 57 to right guard, played very well, and they won the semifinal game. They'll be in the championship. And you could see the joy evident on the coach. But here's how he says he watches the game. I buy a hot dog and a Coke. I go sit up in the stands, and I'm a dad. And I do everything every other dad does there. He yells at the officials, and he complains about the play calling. <laughs> he was a lot happier yesterday when we talked to him. Yes, he was. You know, I understand how he's feeling, though. I've, I've got two playing high school balls. As a matter of fact, they're playing right now. I'm missing their game. He had a chance to see him. He will miss the championship game next week, though, because his club is going to be on the road. Still there. One ball inside with Lawrence Phillips. Oklahoma State had a big win today. They beat the Sooners 12 to nothing. And the Sooners, the. Uh, the only team left on Nebraska's schedule after this one. That loss today may take them right out of a bowl game, too. Yeah, I agree with they that. They have six wins. <laughs> Frazier in the ball game today, to uh, add to his story, has one for 94 yards, pass for 86 yards, and the third quarter is over. So we'll be back after the third quarter. Break. After this, and a word from our ABC station. Of this 90th consecutive battle between the Jayhawks and the Cornhuskers. And now, Keith, back to you. That's Max Falkenstein in his 50th year <laughs> broadcasting Jayhawk athletics. 527 of KU's 1002 football games. There's been nine head coaches, four conference affiliations. 
10 ADs and 1,600 game broadcast hours. And he says he remembers you as a youngin. <laughs> Frazier down the line, pitches that ball off the trailing Phillips, and Lawrence Phillips breaking the tackle at the line. Crimmins is inside the 10, first and goal, Nebraska. Can't run that play any better. Bob Brooks, at 52 years of broadcasting Iowa football, we believe is the senior man. Jim Zabel has been over doing Iowa football for 48 years. And then there's Tim Brandt. <laughs> Well, I tell you what, Tommy Frazier runs that option so well. Reads. Phillips is hobbling. You know, I thought we'd see more of Phillips today. They uh, they played it pretty much today like they did the last uh, last ball game. Clinton Childs steps in in the tailback position now at 215 pounds. Fresh legs here. Look out. He gets it. He can pop his way past tired people. First and goal from about the seven. Frazier pitches back to Child. He dribbles it down to the five and covers it just about the five-yard line. See, just as I say that Frazier runs that option better than anybody that put it on the ground. Good pressure that time by the defense to come in and get in his face and close things down. You look at the statistics and you see what, what takes place here. Look, look right here. See these four turnovers down here for Kansas? That means 21 points for Nebraska. All right, the three turnovers for Nebraska, no points by the Jayhawks. And that's been the difference thus far in this ballgame. Everything else, fairly even. Second down and goal from the five. Frazier will keep it. Touchdown. talk about a lot of guys a lot of guys coming after you watch this boom boom all these guys are going to lead as Frazier comes and gets behind them go ahead and roll it and watch all the blockers he has in front of him now he's trying to read the end stop it right here can you do that see the defensive ends already hooked this is wide open in here and he takes it on in gets a block from McAvicka and touchdown Frazier Brown for the extra point Good. 1346 to play in a ball game and it's now 35 to 3 Nebraska. Thirteen forty-six to go in the fourth quarter. Lawrence Phillips came out. He had re-injured his left ankle. An ankle sprain has been bothering him for quite some time. They retaped it. He got up, started walking around. I think for, we will certainly see him back into the ball game. Keith? Okay. Tommy Frazier on the day now totals 185 yards and three touchdowns. High kick by Brown. June Hindley back in the end zone will put a knee down. Kerry Glenn, you didn't hear his name today on the reports out of the Ohio State game, but there's a tie between uh, Terry Glenn and June Henley and that Glenn literally came off the street taken in by the Henley family in Columbus Ohio and gave him a home and effectively June and Terry consider each other brothers though their last names are different they've been through a lot together there's no question about that Terry Glenn whose mom was murdered moved in with them as you said and give Mr. Henley a lot of credit too he uh, delivers those papers early in the morning and he made sure everybody in that house was working Mark Williams is in trouble, gets away from it, throws up field to Friday. Friday is knocked out of bounds across the 30. That'll be a first down. Tonight on ABC, Jeff Foxworthy video is a finalist on Funniest Home Videos. Bob Saget guests on an all-new Jeff Foxworthy show. Followed by Maybe This Time, and then a brand-new version of a Disney classic on Saturday night at the movies. The Barefoot Executive, all tonight on ABC. First down at the 31. Williams throws low and complete. Well, I tell you, that's becoming a dangerous pass now, Keith. They've gone to it so often today. I don't know if you watch Farley on that play, but he's starting to cheat back a little bit, expecting that quick slant. And if he's cheating over there on that side, he almost had the interception. If he gets that pick, look out at six points. 
Rip, uh, Rip Engel would never let you use the word cheat. <laughs> you had to say fudge. Fudge a little bit to the outside. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Van pitches. Turns it up and runs into a lot of trouble. Eric Van appearing at the running back position for KU is a sophomore out of El Dorado. And there was a whole lot of folks, including Mr. Farley, in his way. Kansas fans are heading home. Don't blame them. It's cold. They want to get warm. Nebraska fans, they aren't ready for that long drive yet. They're just hunkered down. You mentioned Van. You know, he missed spring ball to play baseball. The guy's still here. No wonder Mama won't let him in the house. <laughs> he started blue, though. It's a different color. He's got enough antifreeze in him. Long downfield for third. Can't run it now. Michael Booker was with him all the way. So Isaac Bird can't chase that one down. And the Jayhawks will have to punt. That's a television set that guy had on the roof inside that cardboard box. You couldn't see the TV that well. But every time we take that shot, he gets excited. <laughs> <laughs> Keeps in circulation. <laughs> it's got to be about 25 degrees. Wind chills like in single digits. Three Huskers are deep again. That ball really coming back quick on the snap to the punter Simmons get to the way and rolling around on the rug and will roll dead at about the 35 yard line. 12-33 to play in a ball game. Love their Huskers, don't they? Brooke Beringer back in there at quarterback. 35 to 3 ball game. I would think Tommy Frazier's probably done. That's John Bedrow breaking. No, it is not. It is Clinton Childs, 26, breaking loose and busting past the marker for a first down. Clinton Childs is an interesting running back, six feet, 215 pound junior. Had a bad knee earlier this year. Actually had a knee strain. He's been rehabbing it quite a bit. Not getting as much playing time as he'd like, but he's a talent. When you look at Benning and Childs, those two combined for 781 yards and 10 touchdowns last fall. I keep looking for that old wingback reverse here, and I haven't seen it. They don't need it. That's right. Fullback. Brian Schuster. Three yards. No dust. Even though this is decisively Nebraska's game, the Cornhuskers look well on track toward defending their national championship. It's been a good season for the Kansas Jayhawks and bodes well for the future because they don't lose that many people. And uh, they get some starters back from injury who have missed the entire season. They keep running the ball here. Clinton Childs takes it again and picks up about three yards. Here's Lynn Swan. Well, Keith, the guy you don't see a lot of from Nebraska is a punter, Jesse Cushion. He's right here, number 19, just selected as a Phillips 66 Academic All-American. He is also a meteorologist and climatology major, and he predicted that the weather for this game was light winds out of the north between 40 and 50 degrees. Well, he was a little off in the temperature, so it was the only second time this year that he's been off. Well, thank goodness we had window panes. You know, 23 players have been named to that all Big 8 academic honor roll for Nebraska. It's pitched back to Damon Finney, who is in the ball game at tailback now, and yes, he too is from Omaha, and Thad Warren knocks him out of bounds. Tell Jesse, don't worry about missing the forecast. <laughs> You know, that goes with the business. He said it was going to be 50, 40 or 50 degrees today with light winds. And players go to him and see how they're going to dress. They all came with lighter jackets than they probably should have. Keith, you were talking about that defense for Kansas. They are young. You talk about voting well for the future. You've got 10 guys on the two deep roster that are under 20 years of age. They're teenagers. Isaac Bird is deep for Cush's punt now. He doesn't give you much of a return. The opponent's only averaging uh, about two and a half, but he knocks that one all the way to the end zone. He just got total rotation on it, tight spin, 
And it just cut a hole through the air and went through the end zone. We'll come back to the 20. Ten minutes and 22 seconds left to play in the ball game. It's an interesting offensive series for Nebraska. Nothing fancy. They're just trying to melt the clock and get out of here. 35 to 3. No more damage needed. Ben Roots now is into the ball game for Kansas at quarterback. He's a junior out of Oklahoma City. First two years of his collegiate football career at Nebraska. But he got caught in a numbers game up there and he went off to uh, junior college and then found his way down to Kansas. Hands the ball to Eric Van. And Van picks up almost five yards on the carry. You know, he's starting to accept his role now as a backup to Mark Williams, too. Ben Roots is an outstanding quarterback, as you mentioned. After he uh, went to junior college, he did transfer to Nebraska, and he was he was heavily recruited. But he said he had to make a decision by January one, so he did. Went to Nebraska, and uh, comes here. Now he's behind Mark Williams, so it's not what he envisioned by transferring. It's five of 14, 61 yards, and he says, "Hey, Williams is playing well right now." Passes away, passes completed, coming out of the backfield. It is Levine, and Levine has a first down at the 38-yard line. At nine minutes and 38 seconds to play in the game. Still play action working in the offensive line. Not that big, but it's getting the job done. Look at this. This is the waggle. It's avoided the pressure most of the day. We should take your punishment after you release it. But uh, Saltzman knocks him down. But still, you run that waggle, you're going away from most of the pressure. And it's first down. Stay with the game as Levine. No, it's 25, Eric Van. And Van is all the way to the 45 of Nebraska. So with reserves all over the field now on uh, both teams, Eric Van pops a big one, and the Jayhawks are moving down the field. Eric Van, another one of those small running backs. He's only 5'9", grew up here in Lawrence, Kansas. He was the Kansas High School Player of the Year. And eventually his family moved over to El Dorado, but we talked about the guy, what a talent he is. He's also an outstanding baseball player here for KU. There's so many of them, though. Troutman down at Colorado, so many stocky guys that are uh, built like the Emmett Smith, you know. They're just square. Low to the ground. So quick. Low center of gravity. Ball is handed off again to Van. Runs into a stack. Kind of hard to move that tonnage. Got a little bit out of it. Probably the best known little running back out of this conference. I mean, when you talk little, it was Barry Sanders. Well, he had some great feet. Still has some great feet. He turn his shoulders, his feet move at full speed. He makes cuts. Another name, Sanders. Oklahoma Sanders. State. Bad here. The game was a little bit bigger, though. A little bit. Mike Rozier was is thrown outside and again it is complete to Ashande Smith first down Kansas down at the Nebraska 30 yard line. Ashande Smith Rancho Cucamonga California 41 to 3 now Ohio State. You have to protect yourself you got to score a lot of points. I was just going to say don't show that score holds. to Nebraska folks. They'll try to get another one on the board here. That's just the way it is these days. We're talking about Gale Sears here. They've had some great athletes come through this place, haven't they? One of them has come back home, John Hader. Look at that athletic group. Again, it is in the right side of the line between the center and the guard, and L.T. Levine has found a goodly bit of yardage there today. So the running backs now starting to add up some yardage against the reserves of Nebraska. Offensive line, 298 pounds. We talked about that. Watch the little trap here. They tried to work. Actually let him in. Did you see that? Just moved over and let Ogard come through. 97. Trapped him, then moved to the right side and picked up some pretty good yardage. Eric Van is the single back now. He's got the ball. Inside the 20 to the 19. And that'll be a first down. You know, we were talking about this yesterday, Keith, all the great players that have come through here, and only three jerseys have been retired in this school. And, of course, it was Ray Evans, John Hadle that you mentioned, and Gail Sayers. Kansas basketball team had an exhibition opener last night and won handily. 
And Roy Williams passed by earlier today to say howdy and says he thinks they're going to be pretty good. I think he's right. They're ranked number two in the nation right now. And Peters come back in, but Jason and Christian. Well, they're running too easily up the middle. That's intercepted. It's a foot race. Mike Bowman. No flags. Touchdown. The transfer from Rutgers. Somebody must have shown them the Ohio State school. Here they come. Right back with the touchdown. 86 yards. That's his second big one of the year. Ben Roots acted like he never did see him. Watch Roots. He's locked on over that side. You see his head? He never came off bird. And Fullman just read it, stepped in front, got a good break from the ball, and just outran everybody. Ted Retzlaff is in for the extra point. He'll bobble it. And it goes up. Older John Federal never came up with it clean. That's 27 points now for Nebraska off Kansas turnovers, 41 to 3. I think the Cornhuskers might very well be headed for a little sunshine in Arizona. Yeah, I agree with that. I think right now they are the best team in the country now. You've seen Ohio State. What do you think, Keith? You're not going to get me into that. <laughs> you, won't, you won't get off that fence. <laughs> I like Ohio State. I think they're awfully good. But, you know, I hadn't seen Nebraska until we saw them against Colorado and then again today. And I've seen two dominating performances. Yeah. But I'll tell you why Ohio State, I think, is a very good team, too. And it's called, um, you know, Notre Dame, uh, Wisconsin, uh, Penn State. Sure. And uh, Northwestern, or not Northwestern, but another, whoever it was, in a row. Yeah, they played a strong schedule. There's no question about it. You look at what Nebraska has done, obviously. And Michigan State, a little bit better ball club than a lot had thought. But, uh, you know, you've got Colorado on there and Oklahoma yet to come. But I think the, the reason I think Nebraska is, is number one is because not only do they have the size, the talent, the strength, and the depth, but this is a quicker Nebraska team than we've seen in some years. I agree with that. It's a very, very good football game. Retzlaff kicks off for the Cornhuskers. Seven-yard line, Smith. Searching around for daylight and a place in which to survive, and he finds it at the 24-yard line. You, you know, Keith, I think after watching them today, though, if there is any one aspect of the ball club that is overrated, I think it's the defense. They've got some problems defensively. Great talent, but they give some things away. Against a very sharp passing team that has enough bulk up front to give its passer time. Might be difficult. Over there. How about this? Is that amazing? Well, the whole thing in Nebraska is amazing. <laughs> I mean, that system is, is as good as there has ever been in college football. LT Levine. He's a tough runner. He's impressive. I like him. He's, he's all right. Boy, he's he's a grinder. Yeah. And he picks up a first down. I first saw him as a freshman in the Aloha Bowl. He carried the ball six times for 26 yards. But you could tell then he was a quality player. Same hometown as Glenn Mason, too. Latrell Levine, LT Levine. And he's doing a lot more today of what we thought he had to do. And that's run strong and run direct. Not dance as much. He's been effective. Six and a half minutes to play in the game. Ball just outside the 35-yard line. 41 to 3. And Eric Mann carries the ball. Now the Jayhawks are simply going to run out and eat up that game clock and, and, and go on about their business and think about going up to Stillwater and playing Oklahoma State and finish the season at 9 and 2. And there's an awful lot of folks who happy at nine and two. I agree with you. It's been a great year for KU and they will continue to work. How about Dr. Tom Osborne though? He's trying to do what only three other living coaches have done and that's win back-to-back -back national championships. Darrell Royal did it of course. Bob Devaney at Nebraska and Barry Switzer. Just Oklahoma State remaining for Kansas. On second down it's Levine and he's about two three yards short of his first down. 
Looks like he's dinged up a bit. He's on arm, kind of dragging an arm as he goes on. And the shakes and feeling back into it. Got a little stinger. It's cold, laying on artificial surface. Had about an inch of snow last night, a dusting. They got it off the field, but the field still is hard as a rock. And so is the ball. Eric Galbraith is in there now. And it's Van carrying. And he will get his first down. If time permits, thrifty car rental postgame report with scores and highlights from around the country. Tackle, tackle made by Coleman that time. He's also the one that dinged up Levine as he comes back into the ball game. Coleman's played well today. He's a very physical style football player. He's strong enough to take on offensive linemen and quick enough to cover backs. Here's the pass too high. Intended for Rashawn Day Smith from Ben Root. You can tell he's rusty. He just hasn't had that many snaps, and he's had virtually no game competition late. Keith, that's what caused the interception. He really didn't have enough snaps. He locked on his receiver and didn't go through the progression. And by telegraphing where he was going to throw, then Fullman just picked it off. He yeah, second and ten. Look at this defense. Remember, Nebraska had that tremendous game against Missouri. The defense did. It broke on the ball well all day. And they played a lot of bubble defense, moving the linebacker over. And they've done more of that today. Fist fight in the middle on L.T. Levine. There's what you have next week on ABC's College Football. Those are the games. Those two games there go at noon Eastern time. And these are the games that follow to make up the doubleheader. So check your local listings or your pay-per-view operator for any game that you might choose to watch there. The speculation of where Kansas might go, and when you look down uh, to see the possibilities, the Big Eight number three team goes to the Holiday Bowl in San Diego, which is a nice trip. Kansas State and the Kansas and Colorado are all still involved in this thing. The Buffaloes have two losses, and now Kansas has called a timeout with three minutes and 58 seconds to play. You know, don't count Florida State out of that Fiesta Bowl yet either. Florida State wins out. They've got a shot to get to the Fiesta Bowl. Well, you've got to, they got to beat Florida. That's a very simple answer to that. they got to go down to Gainesville and beat the Gators. with optimism as KU was moving the ball, but on fourth and eight, they failed. Then there was a fumble of a punt. That led to a touchdown. Then there was another fumble that opened the doors for Nebraska again. And the optimism slowly but surely went the way of the sun. The lights went out for Kansas. They played well except for the turnovers, though, Keith. And I don't mind that gamble early on on fourth and eight. They were in Nebraska territory. I think that's a good call by Glenn Mason. And he, in fact, told us yesterday if they had chances in Nebraska territory, they certainly would take them. It is third down and nine. Roots throws. Nice pass caught by Isaac Bird. And Bird is held up just short of his first down. So it'll be fourth and about two. Heard from the great Olympian Jim Ryan this morning. He lives here in the Lawrence area. Just come back to town, former world record holder. We were remembering a balmy night in Bakersfield, California, when he ran a 351.1 mile. Stunned the world. Didn't know if that would ever be done again, and now look what records are yeah, set. Yeah, not the truth. But Jim Ryan certainly knows the, the geography of this place with that running track below. It would have been great, great relay races here in times past. Fourth down, they go for it with Eric Van carrying the not appear from the mark that he made it. No, he's going to be short. He'll be short by about a half yard. And so Nebraska takes over. They got all the points they need at 41 to 3 with 3 minutes and 12 seconds to play in the ball game. Keith, the last time we worked together in this stadium, November 1st, 1986, 64 to 3, Kansas lost. Of course, back then, Kansas wasn't very strong. They played more homecomings. They had to take their own floats. Now they've got a pretty good program going, and Glenn Mason has them heading in the right direction, and they're young. They'll be even better next year. 
So here are the Huskers operating with Clinton Childs at tailback now, and he'll pick up a yard or so. The crowd today, as we told you some time back, 50,300, which is the first sellout of the season for Kansas. And more than 20,000 Nebraskans uh, came. They sent them 13,000 tickets, but they were buying them from anywhere they could find them. And they've been here and enjoyed themselves. One whole end zone area was big red, and then over on the far side from us, a whole section at the end was all red. This is Joel Makovica in there at fullback now, and he moves the football. Our whole hotel was all red. Oh, it's amazing. You look it down at this uh, this offense. Nebraska has scored in over 60 percent of its drives this year. Talk about efficiency. This is Childs, and that'll be a first down. So stop your clock and move the change at 2:01. The executive producer of ABC Sports, Jack O'Hara, coordinating producer Bob Goodrich for ABC's College Football. Also produced today's game, associate coordinating producer Jim Russler. Today's game here in Lawrence directed incredibly well by Mr. Drew Essikoff. Our technical director, Gary Larkins. Associate director, Bruce Clark. Production manager, Robbie Weiss. Technical operations, Stefan Petrot. Statistician, Dave Bernson. Spotter, Todd Barry. Here, coming around the corner, is Damon Binning. Benning is all the way down to the 35-yard line. Mark Amito, our computer. Our assistants to the producer, Mark Loomis and Bob O'Mara. College Football Today, produced by Charles Copland in our New York studio. College Football Today was directed by Calvin Haywood, technical director, Gary Boyarski, and our New York remote coordinator, Patrick McManus. Patrick McManus. I've heard that name somewhere. Uh, Patrick. It was on a wanted bulletin in Dublin. <laughs> Matt Thurman is now in at quarterback for Nebraska. Here is another one of the youngsters that stepped up a year ago when uh, Tommy Frazier was injured and helped. He sure did help. They call him the Terminator out of Wahoo, Nebraska. <laughs> Matt Thurman. You know, it's amazing. You watch these big offensive linemen. These guys are so huge, averaging over 300 pounds. And yet, Keith, they can run. They're pulling their guards and tackles all the time. They're coming on the option. They're running those counter trays. Guys can run. This is Benning. And the spin will get him a first down. The genuine Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Tommy Frazier of Nebraska. It's just a so-so day, 99 yards rushing, 86 passing, two running touchdowns, one passing touchdown. <laughs> For Kansas, Mark Williams, 27 of 45, 242 yards, two interceptions, unfortunately. In celebrating its 25th year of NCAA sponsorship, Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for academic achievements and assist those in financial need. That'll just about do it. Nebraska dominant. You know, when they break the huddle, every time they break the huddle, they break by saying dominate, and they have today. Nebraska in this victory clinches a tie, but uh, I think that's academic. Cornhuskers win by a score of 41 to 3, continue undefeated in their 23rd consecutive victory. Here are the standings of the Big 8 Conference now with Kansas State in the number two spot with Kansas and Colorado number three. Now stay tuned for the thrifty car rental postgame report featuring scores and highlights from across the country.